Point yeah, though. we back. Yeah, we back. Tune yeah. in, tune in. He had to take a quick commercial break or whatever the hell you want to call it. Water break. Water break. Smoke break, piss break, all that. So before, you know, we stopped the show or whatever, you were talking about, you know, your first artist getting a deal. Like, what did that do to you mentally? Like, how did that motivate you to move forward in this game? Like, did they, like, light the fire up under you to say, you know what, I can really do this shit? I already felt like, I ain't gonna flex. I already, like, like I say, I ain't, like, blown or nothing. But God always give me, like, the little signs where, like, you know, you, you kind of win a little bit. Mm-hmm. It ain't from, like, I don't get nothing from, like, social media. It's more, like, my brothers and my mama or my, my daddy or something, like, be looking at me or treating me different. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I like that. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but just for with the um, getting, like, the first artist, like, put out there. Like, if people know, like, you you did that. Um, it was a told you so type moment. Yeah. Not for people, like, who, for my friends, though. Yeah. Because, like, your friends be the people who least support you, even though it's not that, it's not that they least support you, because at the same time, the support that they... Say if say if I feel like somebody is not supporting me, right? Mm-hmm. They not fuck with me. You know, I, honestly, you're not supporting them neither. You get what I'm saying? A lot of people usually support the friend who kind of wanted a little bit more. That's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, we all gotta get everybody they room to what you call it. It was just kind of like I told you so. For now, I want people like you know when I say stuff, like you know they gonna go with everything I say. I mean it anyway. But in the day, like. This shit don't fucking stop mm-hmm. type shit. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's and I want this for everybody too. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, bro. I want I want everybody to win too. Right. You know, especially my friends and shit like that. So how has your life changed as far as cause you always had a plan. Mm-hmm. Like you said from the beginning, you had a formula since 2013, 2014, you know, when you first started doing this shit. Like how has your life changed since you put that plan on paper? You manifested that plan into what it is today. Like how have things? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. Like what really pushes me a lot is females. Like you know me. Like when I got out of high school, like I ain't had a girlfriend like six years, seven years. Mm-hmm. Like um, when I went to, when I went off to school, you know, I was playing basketball. The basketball shit didn't work out for me, so I kind of like start over. And like at that point, I had a girlfriend that we broke up. So kind of like. Had like mold me into a man. I felt like how to be in love, mm-hmm. but then I love with somebody. They been like with somebody else, so that shit just kind of like molded me. And they had like my head fucked up. Like I was depressed for like five to six months. That's why I left Coastal and came back to like Midlands because it's like I'm down there in Coastal riding a bike. You know, I'm fresh as hell riding a bike. I ain't had no job, but you know, I'm always known for like working, you know, playing ball and shit. You know, we worked at a temp service, making like good money. So I was like, you know, fuck that. Um, Sitting around here, this shit gonna happen. This shit gonna fuck my head. This shit gonna have me depressed. Like, I left Coastal, like, after the first semester, came back to Midlands. I ended up owing them, like, $3,000. And I had to pay that three racks out of, like, pocket before I even got my transcript to USC, like, which was, like, two years later. But within them two years, <clears throat> like, when I got back to Columbia and I initially came back, I thought, like, you know, getting closer to the girl, like, was like, going, um, she still wasn't fucking with me. So I'm like, nah, like, you know, going to Midlands Tech is cool, but. <clears throat> I need me some money, like, you know, working at temp service, you can't do that, like, going to school. So, I started working at the mall, Columbia Mall, and I met so many people, bro, like, so many different people, like, shout out to Lim, shout out to La La, Rob, Ev, everybody, you know, used to work at Lim's, goddamn, mm-hmm. um, so, just working there, and, you know, I started selling shoes, I was, I bought, like, when the uh, white foams came out, I bought six pair, six pair of grapes, mm-hmm. like, just doing, like, different shit, like, you know, I knew, like, if I got my mind off of the girl just like to put my mind on some money that I would be like, I could eventually like get over her. And eventually I kind of like got her back. But at that point, like I was so to it in myself and like doing stuff. Like I just knew like if you put your mind to it and you hustle, you work, you gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say take a girl for example, because a girl gonna put you in perspective if you a man. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if you're a grown ass man. Mm-hmm. So now it's just at me now. Like I know exactly who I am and that's why a lot of people have a lot of hard time. They don't know who they are. Like, once you figure out who you is, you can be honest with yourself. And <clears throat> I'm never going to be like, I'm not going to say like, I ain't going to be in my feelings about no girl. And if I am in my feelings, it's not going to like affect like my daily life because like I had to figure that out the heart. It doesn't. Like, you in business, what you got going on in business, if you're in your 
wife at home arguing, that shit doesn't matter. But a lot of people, with, with they don't try to fix the thing or they don't communicate. So when they get to their they daily life, like their job or something, it's going to really affect them. Mm-hmm. I don't have those type of problems. I know, like, who I am. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And, you know, like you said, bro, women really do motivate niggas, yeah. either in a bad way or a good way. Right. You know, and that's a dope perspective to have, though, like, to say... You know what? I use my relationship. I could, cause it could have went a totally different way. Yeah. You know, you could have done some counterproductive shit and really fucked your whole life up because of your ex. That could have motivated you, you to do wrong, but you actually did right and say, you know yeah. what? I'm a hustle, bro. I'm gonna get some paper. I'm gonna really figure this life shit out. I'm gonna make her awesome. want me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people get. It ain't about the money. Girls love a nigga with motion. You know what I'm saying? That's like, a fact, bro. Feeling like they doing something that you're not doing. And don't take this and try to like go flex on no girl or nothing like that. It's just like if you a man, you gonna run into a girl that you really like and got them, and it's always gonna be like this. It's gonna be someone that you like, and y'all may not work out, but y'all gonna like mold each other to be like grown. I had that at nineteen. I have to wait till I was twenty one. I had stopped playing ball too, so mm-hmm. it wasn't like I was stopped playing basketball and had to come figure this out at twenty five. Like I figured out what I wanted to do at twenty one. You know what I'm saying? I tell like artists I'm working with now, the best thing you could do is go to school. Like every artist I work with that's 18, that's 17, 18, go to college. Go get your families. Mm-hmm. Or even if you're 21, 22. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. Yeah, same thing. I'm just saying like. Yeah, just at the, just. At, the, at, the, at the age 18, you need to be in school. I was in school for seven years at the time of my life. Yeah. Four year degree, seven years. You can tell you can take your time, man. Yeah. You're going to be here. You can go back to school now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for you sure. You rap again. Niggas don't even know you rap. Niggas don't even know. I probably don't already. Now, we're going to put that together, too, when y'all watch this. <coughs> About a year or two, he harder than the motherfucker. I need to be interviewing him. Yeah, bro. I really might put my EP back out. I might redistribute that motherfucker. Do Young Rich Records. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to re-put that bitch out, man. People still listening to that bitch to this day, bro. On God, bro. Niggas come up to me like, bro, remember you dropped the mixtape? I thought about putting out a mixtape anonymously, just rapping, change my voice up. Southern Playlistic like- was the hardest shit that hit that year. That's a fact. It was no streaming available. All SoundCloud. SoundCloud. A free SoundCloud account at that. I still got that motherfucker. And my rap name was Shaq Sims with a dollar sign at the end. But yeah, man, Casey, I appreciate you for coming on, cuz. For sure. I really enjoyed the conversation. For sure. Yeah. This is definitely a dope convo. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you. Yeah. So Yeah. I appreciate the fans. Because y'all maybe want to come on here. Even though I'm supposed to be and come on here. But I just didn't want to like, you know. I want to look more so organic. You know, we cousins already. So yeah. you know how that shit is. Uh-huh. It's just like if your brother was like the best player on the team. Like, you're not going to be like, oh yeah, let me get him to play like. Uh, on my team, or, you know, you can get him to play with, on your team any other time. You know what I'm saying? You know yeah. How yeah, I already knew if I ever hit you up, I could get an interview. Even though you're the busiest nigga in the world. But I got you interviews too, my buddy. Yeah, you did. That's a fact. You did. You did. I appreciate that. I got some more for you too. Yeah, you already know. Y'all gonna see some dope shit coming. I got some real dope interviews for y'all coming real, 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 real soon. I got a lot of dope shit on the oh, way, man. This one, I'm struggling. <laughs> This motherfucker open. I tell you. Everybody who know me know I do not smoke weed. At fucking all, man. And shout out to Rock Green again, man, for, you know, sponsoring this episode of Muddy Waters, man. Bringing me the drip. For sure, y'all definitely go cop the drip at rockgreen.com. R-O-C-K-K-G-R-E-E-N.com. And follow them on Instagram as well. Rock Green, R-O-C-K-G-R-E-E-N. Yeah, y'all yeah. fuck with them. So why the bar exclusive? Tell them where to find you at before you say you um, out, bro. Find me um on Twitter and Instagram, Young Young Rich Rambo. Um YouTube, Young Rich Rambo, Facebook, Shah Houdini. Um and that's about it, you know. Tune in, tap in, and you also you can type in Young Rich Rambo on Google. You'll see different like, you know, little articles and write ups and different stuff I done release that's out. And guess what? We right now we about to do. We out. We out.